My dad was murdered in 2002. He was shot in the doorway of his house. My sister was home. She was 16. She heard the gunshot and heard our dad hit the floor. You don't have to be an investigator to recognize that, like, some of these things just seem strange. It was just sloppy? Not even done at all. You feel angry with this? Sometimes. I just, like, need this to be done. I need, I need it to move on with my life. And I can't explain it any other way than, like, this just, like, is holding me back from everything else. And so my brain, like, literally won't allow me to think about anything else. We're going to take a quick breather because it's heavy guys. I need another glass of wine. I'm so sorry. You lost your father when you were a kid. He was murdered, and you have yet, you speculate, but you have yet to knock down who the actual killer was. Yeah. So where does that begin? Well, it begins... I was born. Just kidding. <laughs> I've really got to cool it. My dad was murdered in 2002, um, just at his house, which is, like, common, but also kind of strange to, like, be murdered in your own home by seemingly strangers. And so he was shot in the doorway of his house while he was, like, walking to the door. Obviously, there was something going on outside that he could hear and was heading to the door. The door was kicked in, and he was shot. One shot to the head, and he died. And it's been a cold case ever since. So that's kind of that. I mean, it was in Ohio where it was a really small town, like super quaint, very rural, and he was black. And so take that with a grain of salt. I don't know what that has to do with why it hasn't been solved, but you could speculate the demographic of this town that that even subconsciously has something to do with it. Mm -hmm. And so no one was really like diving into this. He had a massive family. Um, I have tons of cousins. He had siblings. It's very weird to me that no one was like really like gung-ho about just trying to look into this. But everyone just kind of accepted it as it was and let it go. And I was very young. I was six. And so I didn't even know that my dad was murdered. I thought that he had a heart attack and died. And then when I was 16, I found out that he was murdered through like a very crazy set of circumstances. And it always rubbed me the wrong way that like everyone just kind of like kept living their life knowing that this was this unsolved mystery within the family. And it wasn't until I was a little bit older that I could really do anything about it. But as soon as I could, I started making phone calls. I started diving into this and started this weird podcast <laughs> and uh, weird we're here. weird fascinating it's i mean I, maybe i haven't tapped into the true crime uh podcast or stories enough but I, I personally haven't heard of one of where the actual you know a victim of the family is investigating the murder of someone like their father or someone in the family so before i, I i'm interested in hearing uh you know more details about your investigation of course and why you're doing it, of course, which I think you just mentioned. But who who found your father? Was he by himself or was someone at the house at the time? So my sister was home. Sorry. She was 16 um, at the time. She had just turned 16, uh, like a week prior. And she was in her room asleep. It happened at 6.30 in the morning. And she heard the gunshot and heard our dad hit the floor. She was very scared. So she waited about 45 seconds, and then she went into the living room and saw our dad lying there and called 911. So she was home, and that's sort of how everything transpired from that point moving forward. But there were two other notifications to the police that morning, and my sister's was second. And what was the first? So the first was next door. My dad's sister lived next door with her son, and her son's girlfriend was home at the time. And Kim had hit the home alarm system when she heard the gunshot. But there was a very strange home invasion happening next door, allegedly. And she was tied up. But when she heard the gunshot, she thought that someone she knew had been shot, and her adrenaline kicked in, so she broke free, hit the home alarm system. And that was the first notification to the police. She was tied up, literally tied up from this home invasion you're talking about? Allegedly, yes. Okay, so we'll get into the allegedness of it, if that's even a word. But that was simultaneous. So she was tied up and this was happening, and then the shot happened concurrently. Correct. So there was a home invasion next door at around 6 in the morning. That lasted around 30, 35 minutes, which is incredibly long for a home invasion. 
And the men who broke into the house and tied up my Aunt Pearl, my cousin Omar, and Omar's girlfriend, Kim, took Omar outside, went to my dad's house, shot my dad. Kim heard the gunshot knowing they had Omar, and she hit the home alarm system. And then Alyssa, my sister, called 911. Omar then ran to the end of the street. There was this business at the end of the street. And he had them call 911, and he talked to the 911 operator, and he was the third notification. And so the people that were, you know, doing the home burglary with Omar and your aunt, you said? Mm -hmm. They, that it's all speculation that the same guy went over just because it was assumed. because it's the, the same people, probably, more but, than likely. And they were, they were not caught. Correct. And was there any spec? There's any leads or any kind of evidence that led to these guys or who they were? Anything of the sort? Is that what you're investigating? Yeah, there's speculation of who they are. Um, one of them was actually taken to grand jury, and then they dropped the charges um, for reasons unknown at this time. But they have this idea of like who they think was there based on who they think this one person is and sort of his network of people. So they have like speculation of. Oh, it could have been, like, these three guys or maybe this other guy. And, like, they sort of have this, like, short list, but they can't confirm anything. These guys are saying it wasn't them. And they're not turning on each other. And so it's it's very hard to sort of pin down who was there, why they were there. I think motive really helps in these situations where when you can pin down motive, which you don't actually have to prove in court, it's very easy to find the people. And then you can sort of go for evidence after that. Mm -hmm. But... Um, no one can really figure out the motive, and that's making it all very difficult. Yeah, I mean, that was my next question. I was curious because obviously there's clearly something tied immediately to the next house, which your father related to the, the neighbor. So when you kept saying allegedly, what did you mean by that? I wasn't there. What, what else do you mean by that? Um, <laughs> it's just very interesting to me that this is framed. I am repeating that it's a home invasion because that's how it was fed to me. At that's, what time? This is when you were 16? Uh, 16 now uh, in the police reports, it's home invasion, home invasion gone wrong, home invasion at Pearl's house. And then they were looking for money and they couldn't find any here. So they went next door. It's like this weird, just very thought out home invasion that then ended up not thought out because someone ended up dead accidentally. And that's so crazy. And like, None of that makes sense to me. And they were tied up. You know what I mean? That's that's very with a lot, there's intent there. I mean, tying sure. someone up. Right? If that's what happened. What do you think happened? I don't know. Do you have any speculation or speculation of motive? Is there anything that's going going on in your head? I'm sure you talk about that. Yeah, I have a few theories. My dad was um, quite a colorful character and was a confidential informant as well as a womanizer and. A former drug dealer. So it could have been anyone. <laughs> it could have been anyone in this town. A confidential informant? Is that really, is that declassified now? Or was he an informant for? So yeah, he was an informant on a lot of like local drug cases. So basically it's very interesting. Confidential informant is not the same as like what people who end up going into like witness protection are in. And there's a lot of discrepancies there. And the color of skin of people who go into witness protection and the people who are considered confidential informants is vastly different. My dad was considered a confidential informant which remains confidential until the case goes to trial. And then your identity is revealed. And then there is no protection for you. And my dad was a confidential informant on cases that ended up going to trial. So his identity was revealed and it was obvious that it was him and people knew it was him. And they then he developed this reputation of being a snitch. And one thing could always lead to another in that situation. Was that a potential motive in regards to maybe someone knew he was... An informant? Yeah, I think it could go one of two ways. I think it could be someone who wanted to retaliate on something he had already snitched on, or he was working on something and this person didn't want to go to jail, so they wanted to get rid of him before it got to that point. That I'm not sure of. I don't know what he was working on at the time. That's confidential. I only know the cases that there was a trial and there was a conviction, so that's all on record. Mm -hmm. But anything that wasn't closed yet, I don't know about. So what, what do you think the biggest motivation for you in regards to solving this murder? Is it just, are you looking for closure? Or is it closing a gap of frustration because no one else has been seeking it out in your family? Probably a little bit of both. I have a natural curiosity for this sort of thing, uh, but I also weirdly feel like 
like a piece of my life is like tied up in this in ways that like if twins are separated at birth, they like move the same and act the same, even though they weren't around each other. And they sort of know that there's like something missing from their life. I almost feel that way about this. Like, I just can't keep going with my life and do the things that I actually want to do until I solve this case. I don't want to be doing this. I would rather be doing anything else, no offense, than sitting here talking to you about this. Mm. Offense taken, but yeah. I just like need this to be done. I need I need it to move on with my life. And I I can't explain it any other way than like this just like is holding me back from everything else. And so my brain like literally won't allow me to think about anything else. Is this part of, you think this is part of your grieving process? Like once again, you're, so you're six years old. You were told it was a heart attack. And then 10 years later, you found the truth that your dad was murdered. Do you remember, I'm curious as that split there, like, do you remember anything from six to 16? And then- what the process of losing your father or growing up without a father from 16 on is? Yeah, it's different. Same, same, but different. I mean, I, I didn't have my dad for most of my life, but I think that the way that you process someone dying of a heart attack and the way that you process someone being murdered is very different. And I know that because I did both. My dad died two ways. So I have sort of this weird, my dad died of a heart attack for 10 years of my life. And I processed it that way and it was hard and it was very difficult, but it's like life. Like that's a very like health, God, whatever, like that happened. And I can process that that happens to people. Someone taking my dad's life and robbing him and me of this relationship that we could have had is different. And one feels a little more like internal and than the other. And so I think that that plays a part in why I'm so adamant about solving this because I had pretty much come to terms with the fact that like my dad was gone by the time I was 16. I had done a lot without him up to that point. And then to find out that like I missed out on all of these things because of someone else mm. really changed my perspective of this and the way that I processed his death. And it, it felt like, I have to, at the very least, know who it was. For for you or for justice? First for me, if justice happens, I don't even know what that word means in the United States <laughs> um, and our legal system, but if someone gets convicted and goes to prison for my dad's murder, like, cool, but they live 21 years without paying the price— so they got to watch their kids grow up and have a life and bury their parents and do all of these things that had they paid the price at the time, they wouldn't have been able to do. So, like, what does justice really mean? Mm. Are you angry? Do you feel angry with this? Sometimes. Not today. <laughs> Thank God. But sometimes, sure. I, I go through, like, the weirdest range of emotions. I think the most consistent is, like, like the deepest sadness I can't explain really, but like I feel sad most of the time. Does it come from this? Oh, probably a little. Does it feel reopened when you're investigating your own father's murder? Like are you opening up a whole range of emotions and a new grief process in a way? It feels very heavy for sure. It's so strange. I am like really good most of the time, like very funny and very funny. Um, no, but like, I, I'm like cracking jokes and I am, you know, smiling and I'm able to like get through a day. And then like, I don't know what happens sometimes. It's like, oh yeah, I remember all the like good times you had. Well, now you're paying the price for it today. And it's just like the craziest feelings this range I've never felt before. And like that all happened kind of as I was starting to reopen all of this. And it kind of is like, people clock it for sure. They're like, wow, you're doing really well. Like, and I'm like, oh, is that weird? Like that I'm so cool and happy. Like that's weird. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's so weird. And then I'm like, I feel it all, but I don't know. It definitely hits harder, like looking into it. But then I wonder, like, I don't know anything else. Like, I don't know what I would feel like at 28 and a half 
if I wasn't looking into it? Because that's what I'm experiencing right now. Would I feel the same thing and just not be closer to answers? Mm. How long have you been looking into it as heavy as you are now? Four, like four-ish years. And how are you feeling four or five years ago? I definitely put pressure on myself that I could have been looking into it more. There's that. There's always that like, I'd rather know that I failed than wonder what would happen if I tried. So then where are you with it? What, what, what is your what, what have you, what is your biggest aha moment with your investigation and what have you found? Ooh. Oh, that's crazy. And by the way, how, how many episodes do you have? Nine. So there's nine episodes? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more details, people, that we're going to be brushing over a lot of the information um, in regards to your story. But I'm curious as to has there been any evidence that you found that really turned the tide of pointing the finger potentially, allegedly? As someone? I think that when I started looking into it, I had a very clear idea of what I thought happened. It was super cut and dry to me, almost like, why would I even look into this? It's so obvious. And there were a lot of new characters revealed through my initial investigation and diving into it. And that was surprising. And then their connection to certain people was surprising. And then those people's connection to each other was surprising. And like every step of the way, there's been like surprise factor after surprise factor that all sort of tied together, which was surprisingly great because it made this a little bit easier of like, oh, this just makes sense. This is, I'm on the right path here. Yeah, well, I mean, sorry to cut you off, but what, what is that path? What are, you, what are you looking for and where do you, how do you get to this point of finding surprises? Like what are you investigating, what, 21 years later? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, where do you start an investigation as you're not an investigator by nature in no. regards to professionally? No, yeah. So in regards to finding some of these surprises, A, I want to know what are those surprises specifically and how did you unravel those surprises? So I started with the police files. Um, that seemed like the easiest place to start, just reading what was written. And then I don't have to talk to anyone, especially police officers. So I'll just read stuff for now and get a really good understanding. Because also they're not expecting me to know what I'm talking about when I sit down with them. So when they're feeding me bullshit, I can be like, well, that's not what this says. Mm. So I was like, I'm just going to study this in depth. And I got an understanding of on paper what happened that day, which was surprising in and of itself because just from jump, it's like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, you don't have to be an investigator to recognize that, like, some of these things just seem strange. It was just sloppy? Sloppy or not even done at all. They didn't wipe down the scene at all. Like, there is no way right now, a lot of people will write to me very annoyingly and say, oh, just test the DNA. You have to collect DNA to test DNA. The police collected no DNA. No DNA that I'm aware of. And I've asked, and I've tried to get a list of evidence collected, and there is nothing. Because my first thing was, well, it's 2020 at the time. Let's just test stuff. We don't even really need to do anything crazy. Let's just test these fingerprints. I'll send in a 23andMe, and we'll see who I'm related to that was there. Mm. Easy. Well, you can't do that if there's nothing. And so from jump, there was this sort of neglect happening that— is really unfortunate because there's nothing I can do about that. Nothing. It's done. It's done. If the only way this gets solved in court is through DNA, it will never. And I think that in the beginning, I had to come to terms with, I had a moment, actually, I, I remember this day, where I sat down and I had to be honest with myself, like, what will be enough? Mm. If I'm going to do this and I'm going to put myself through probably the most traumatic thing ever outside of just not having a dad growing up, what will make all this worth it? What's enough? And anything more than that is great. But like, what's my bar? Like, what is it? And I had to decide if just simply knowing who killed my dad and going to bed at night going, I know who did it would be enough because there is a possibility that that's all I'll get, that I won't get my day in court, I won't see justice, I won't get any of that. So is knowing enough? And I had to like really be honest with myself before I continued if that would be enough for me. And I ultimately decided that it would be, but like 
what a shitty set of options. Mm. So when you started this process, when you're on it now, is, is it a sufficient enough answer for you to have your own personal knowingness of who you really truly believe killed your father? Or do you want to see prosecution and know that this is the guy? Like at what point is enough of an answer? Because you're saying if you if DNA wasn't taken and you're saying the likelihood of finding who did it without DNA is you know slim, what is that barrier? It's a great question. I'm not sure that I know that right now. But I do know that I don't have enough information to feel like I have closure. So I am still continuing on with my investigation. I have a theory. I have a theory that I think is strong. And I have a theory that makes sense on paper that I'm going to continue on with and try to prove or disprove it. But I don't think that right now today I have enough to go to bed at night knowing I know who did it. So who do you think killed your father? I cannot confidently say that I know that today. I just don't. I I, th- I think I'm on the right path of a group of people who were involved. But at the end of the day, one person pulled the trigger. Mm. And that, I don't know who who that is. Uh, and I think I'm, I'm landing on motive and I'm landing on circumstance and I'm landing on putting these pieces together and setting the scene. But who pulled the trigger? There was one gunshot. And they weren't all like, one, two, three, go. We're all in this together. Mm-hmm. One person did it. And th- I'm really trying to, like, land on who it was. So right now with the theory that you said you're tied to, what is that theory? That the home invasion was staged, that that morning was specifically picked to kill my dad. I don't think this was an accident. I don't think that there was a home invasion where people were trying to get money and they landed upon my dad's house and they— got scared that he had a gun in his house and that's why they shot him out of like their own weird self-defense in someone else's home. I don't think any of that is true. I think that this home invasion was planned, planted, made to believe was real by the women in the house. I don't think that they knew this was going on. And so to them, it felt real. So when they're telling this story to the police, of course, they're going to say, oh my gosh, someone broke into your house. Because to them, someone broke into their house, tied them up, put blankets over their heads, had guns to their heads, were rummaging through the house. To them, that was all real. They left. They went next door to my dad's house knowing that they were supposed to kill my dad at the bidding of someone else. And they shot him at the front door. He was walking towards the front door, probably like as far away as I am from you, to the door, when the door was kicked in and they shot my dad and they left. They didn't even enter the house. So they kicked on the front door and they just shot him immediately as if they were ready for it? Or were they, they saw armed? him and they shot him. And then just walked out and nothing was stolen? Nothing. I mean, I feel like if nothing was stolen, I mean, obviously, as obvious as can get, maybe not in the eyes of the court of the law, but you, if well, it was also, a home invasion, you know? If you're breaking into a house to steal money, you're in there for 90 seconds, max. You're in, you get what you want, and you get out. Did they steal anything from your aunt's house next door? No. Okay. So clearly there was an obvious In motive. In 35 there. minutes of being there. What was happening? Was any dialogue with the people that broke in and your aunt? What was that dialogue during the 35? They were looking for a safe with money, and the safe wasn't there. Isn't that something they find out immediately? They wouldn't take 35 minutes to figure out? Or maybe they just didn't believe them they were they looking. They didn't believe them, I'm sure. And but Pearl and Kim were like, the safe isn't here, and the safe isn't here. So what does your aunt say about this? Now nothing. She's very quiet. But she was just like, oh, they were looking for a safe. We were scared. We were tied up. Home invasion, home invasion. Eventually, you know, she wasn't saying much. Is there any information you think your family's hiding from you? Yeah. Speculatory, or you think you know what they might be hiding? I'm not sure what they're hiding. Outside of protecting you, because obviously telling you as a six-year-old is sure, protecting sure. you. I don't know what they're hiding. I will say that I think some people in my family know more than they're letting on. And I think some people in my family know everything that happened that day. Everything meaning you think they have... They know who did it. They know why. They know how. Why do you think that? Proximity. Meaning? If you're there, you know. Specifically your aunt. My cousin. Was your cousin there too? Well, Omar was outside with these men when they shot my dad. Omar. Okay, sorry. Okay. So he's, did he see it happen? I believe so. And so after they killed your dad, they left your aunt and Omar at the house and just ran away. And they were masked, they were covered up, I'm assuming? Allegedly. And you don't think they were? I don't know. I wasn't there. Do you have a relationship with your aunt and Omar right now? No. Is this, is this the, the 
a breakup right now because of this whole scenario? No, we. I never really knew them. Okay. Um, I didn't grow up with them. I, I didn't have a relationship with them before. Omar and I had chatted briefly before the podcast came out and um, never again after. Wait, was he upset that you were publicly talking about it? Yeah. Did you get a take that you talking about it was more of like a, this, like, keep it to ourselves? Or do you think maybe he was hiding something that he knows and he doesn't want to publicize? Well, he definitely doesn't want to be associated. My argument to that is I don't think he did it. I don't think he killed my dad. But he was obviously there. I mean, he was in the house that was invaded. So you're there regardless. You're associated with this day. You're associated with this morning. Your testimony is wildly important because you were in the house when these men broke in. You can tell us what they were doing for 35 minutes. They took you outside. You could hear their voices if you couldn't see their face. Like, you have a lot of these missing pieces to this greater puzzle So if I talk about this day and I talk about my dad's murder, you will come up. You being so against me talking about you raises red flags for me. Mm. Why are you so defensive? So what is your thought in regards to, okay, so they're next to your your aunt's, next to your your dad's house before they killed him, uh, allegedly looking for a safe of money, and then they just ran over there and killed your father. If the initial plan was to kill your father, why, how come they just didn't go to the door and just kill your father you think they're you think they're actually were looking for money like did they have money in the house did they end up even though they didn't find it was there any money in the house to be found not that i'm aware of i don't believe that that safe was there that there is a specific safe that they were referring to i don't believe that that safe was there it is possible that safe was in my dad's house but i'm not sure if maybe it was they didn't even seem like they didn't even look for it it's a good question my this is wild be careful madison what do you have to be careful about I don't want to say something that I shouldn't say. What don't you want to say? Things that could get me in legal trouble. Oh, don't say that. Um, Yeah, we don't want to get you in legal trouble. Well, in regards to the legal potential legal trouble, is this is it are you is it accusational? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I want to be very careful. Yeah, of course. Um, I think that it's possible that I think that I don't think I know. Omar was treated as a victim because his house was invaded and broken into. And I think that is very convenient for Omar. Because when you're treated as a victim, even though you are also a witness, not a suspect, a witness, you're treated very differently when you're just a witness or when you're a victim who's also a witness. So you're saying a theory is maybe they just, aka kind of staged a break-in, played that card, and then went over and killed him and made it look like a botched robbery? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that the idea was let's make this look like a home invasion gone wrong. If Omar gets out a little unscathed because he's a victim, that's not a bad thing for Omar. And if the person who planned and organized this is a relative of Omar's, he could have been looking out for him. Was the person who planned and orchestrated this or potentially involved have ties to Omar or your aunt? If this was planned and organized, it's possible that another one of my cousins was the planner and or organizer. And why do you think a cousin would even, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I hope I didn't earlier I didn't jump ahead too quickly when I asked you the first question in regards to your theory of motive. If I did, let's circle back. But... Are you speculating, speculating that somebody in your family was involved? Outside of Omar and your aunt that were there, are you speculating that potentially someone in your family was involved in the killing of your father? I think that there were other family members that were not huge fans of my dad. There's one family member in particular mm. who was sentenced to life in prison, no possibility of parole because of my dad being a confidential informant. And I think that is undeniably a theory worth looking into. That was before or after your dad was killed. He, he was pulled in jail before your dad was killed. It's not like an obvious situation where you would look into as motive. You would think. And no one looked into this. Never, not once. And so this, you said this is your co- a cousin again mm-hmm. that is currently in prison for life? Oh, he's out now. He's out now. How does he feel about this podcast that you have investigating this? Well, if you can find him in protective custody, you let me know. 
He's in protective custody? So allegedly. Allegedly. He's a, who told, how do you allegedly know that he's in protective custody then? I've heard things. What tree are you barking up right now? <laughs> how are you finding this shit out? <laughs> I protect my sources. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, I don't need to know your sources. I know it. My dad died. You know, Liam? No, I know it. Yeah, sorry, Liam. My friend's on the set. So, Liam, for anyone else, we're going to take, take a quick wine break. Take a sip. We're going to take a quick breather because this is heavy shit, guys. Um, <sighs> my friend Liam sitting on the floor. He introduced me in Madison, so I'm just taking a break here. We need a quick breather because this is a lot. Is I, it? I mean, it's, I, I feel more like it's a lot for you, but you seem chill about this. Is You're investigating the murder of your father. This is, you know, like, I, maybe it's, you know what I mean? Like, maybe from you, this is, you've done, you're doing this. If and, you get me to cry... You deserve <clears throat> awards. Awards. I don't think I've cried on a podcast yet. Listen, I don't want to make you cry, but I'm just saying. No, like, no, no. But like, it'd be like pretty good content. I mean, Madison uh, Mickey breaks down on podcast. Should we do that? Should we be a mission right now? Should we make Mad- Madison's cool as shit, so we can fuck around right now. So that's why you know, if anyone's listening, Wait, don't do make him cry. This, I'm, you, you know, what just, like, <laughs> is this live? I look at my camera God. just in case. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm saying, but like, okay, let's just break this down real quick. If you if you look at it like a fly on the wall, like people listening right now, you lost your this is you lost your father when you were six. You were told that he died of a heart attack. Understandably, you found out at 16 that your father was actually murdered. And now you know, fast forward even further. I think you said you're 28 and a half. Thank you for the brutal reminder. What do you mean you're 28? It's a prime year. You look great. This is great. <sighs> I am just saying, there's like these checkpoints I in your life. You're looking, you're looking for the killer of your father. This is very heavy stuff, right? I feel like most people that are listening to this podcast, not to speak for you, is like, this is heavy. You're look, you're investigating the murderer of your father, and there's so many levels to that of just, of course, just finding it and how, how much that gives you closure. And I'm curious if a if you if and when you find this person, is that enough? You know what I mean? Like, because when we talk about grief, which is a heavy theme of this podcast, like it, it sticks with you forever. But this is a lifelong process of just not knowing where it's just an empty void that you seem to be filling and you're diving into the death of your father in ways that most people don't even can even fathom yeah. and not to isolate you even further by saying, I can't imagine, but it's, it's heavy shit. And I, I just wonder how, how this, how this takes a toll on you because I, you know, if I'm understanding you very briefly, I don't know you, we just met, you know, you're, you're very similar to me. Like, I feel like in a sense that, you know, I cope with humor. I, I try to make light of situations and I project X, Y, Z. But is Are this fucking with you? Are you me funny? Not yet. I don't know if you're funny. You're funny. You're, you're funny-ish. I gotta, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, I'm not going to deem you funny. I don't know you long enough. Go. I got to know you for a little, I got to know you a little longer. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm saying like, is this fulfilling right now in this process? Like, is the profo- this process of trying to find your father's killer grueling or is this part of your journey of healing? Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. What part? That question is so insane. That is so bananas. Wait, which part is banana? Uh, bananas? You just reminded me I get energy balls in the fridge with bananas I just made that I'm very excited about. That is so, I don't, I, I can get like this where I get very excited and then I talk really fast and then my brain just moves really fast and I talk really loud and I'm about to do that. Because, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's so crazy that you say that because so many times I say over and over and over again, I don't want to be doing this. I wish that I didn't have to do this. Like if they had come forward and told the truth or someone turned on their friend, I wouldn't have to be doing this. And it's very weird to even consider from me, my end, you, you saying that and me considering that doing this is almost like therapeutic for me. It's very weird to think about because I constantly am like, I don't want to be doing this, but like, I don't always want to go to therapy either. So like, but then it's weird. Cause it's like, are you doing me a favor by not giving me information? Like, it's just so meta and weird and like, whatever, but like, like what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Like, would I feel better if they gave me information and I didn't have to do this? Or is this making me feel closer to my dad than ever? Because I'm learning about him in ways that like I never would have because he's dead. And also maybe never would have if he was alive because he's not gonna come up to me and be like, oh my God, one time I was dealing drugs and hooking up with this stripper and da 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 da. So it's like, I'm 
getting to know my dad on this like very weird level that no one probably really gets to unless they're dead. And is that therapeutic? Liam, can you get us more wine? I need another glass of wine. I'm so sorry. No, don't apologize. This you is why we ruined your show. You didn't ruin my show at all. This is this is this for this is the part of the conversation. And it's like I, I think you know when I'm when we're doing these podcasts. I think I hope my listeners understand that we're doing this on the fly. I, I understand. I, I we're this is real. Like and your reactions are real. This isn't scripted. This isn't a story that we planned out. Obviously, a story you're doing this for your podcast, but. I'm hoping some of these questions get you thinking like that for better or for worse. But I I was just personally curious as to what this process is currently doing for you. Thank you. I just got my new glass of wine. And because I think it seems like your clear end goal is to find this. I feel like that seems like a, I don't want to say obvious, but it seems like a very obvious reason as to why you'd be doing this. Like I I get it. But also it's like no one in your family else has done it because it's a very grueling task what you're doing right now. I don't know if I do that. Of course. And my sister and I actually talk about this. Um, I never want her to feel guilty for not doing this. Um, And she has done a lot. I mean, she's asked questions and she's, she lives there still. So she's like boots on the ground almost where she, for years that I didn't even know my dad was murdered was around people that maybe did it. And, and I think that she sort of has this what do you mean around people that may have done it? How is that, what do you mean? How would it be around people? Well, I mean, she lives in this town. So, like, you it's, know. It was close. It was, you think it was, the killer, yeah, the killer was close. Yeah, she could have been at a bar and yeah. seen one yeah. of the guys that maybe was there. And it's just very different for her in a lot of ways. And, you know, she's hearing things and processing information or not interested in doing this, which is totally fine. I don't fault her. I know I said, like, it is weird that no one really looked into this, but I don't fault my sister at all for not, because not everyone can do this. And most days I am, feel crazy that I'm even able to push through and then it catches up to me. And then I'm like, oh, yep, this is why no one does this, because this does not feel good. And, And it's in so many ways ruined my life. I mean, just to be honest, um, friendships, relationships. I mean, my whole life has just gone up in flames. So, oh, there it is. I'm going to cry. Oh, no. That's so annoying. Yeah, it's not annoying. It's, it's raw. It's okay. What, what part of that gets you emotional? Losing people in your life because of this? Because of what you're investigating? Yeah, just what it's done to my personal life, just in the sense of, like, I hyperfixate on this all the time. I talk about it all the time. I can't. I, I've struggled, like, socially. I, I can't go places sometimes. Like, I just can't go anywhere. Like, I can't leave my house. I joke that, like, I'm, like, so introverted. I used to not be. Like, there was a time in my life that I wasn't like that. And it's very weird to, like, my whole life, my personality is, like, different now. And it's so weird. Since you started this investigation or since? Since it became public. Um, What is that like? I mean, you're literally telling me right now, but are you getting ridicule? Is that what's making it so hard? No, it's just different. It's it's not necessarily. I mean, I, I... Maybe think people are probably talking about me not in the best way, which stresses me out. But that was always before this too. I don't know. It's 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 weird when like the whole idea of what I'm doing is like to make it public, and then to be like, oh no, it going public ruined my life. But like, whatever. They're both true. Ruined is probably relative, but. What was your biggest reason of making it go public as opposed to investigating in silence? I mean, I I had been investigating in silence and no one cared. Mm. I would post on the anniversary of my dad's death on my Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and Reddit and whatever. And no one was investigating and no one cared. No one knew my dad's name. You're stirring the pot in order to get more eyes on it, of course. I had to. Yeah. My dad's not a cute little white girl who didn't have a criminal record. He's saw, not a perfect victim. If I and saw a cute little white girl with a criminal record, I'd be concerned. Sure. <laughs> um, I, and that's generalizing, of course, but no, I mean, I the idea him. that, like, we really like perfect victims, even if they're diverse. We want to make sure that if he's black, he was a doctor. And if he's Indian, he was in a loving relationship and monogamous and had wonderful children. And there isn't a space for interest in cases 
for former drug dealers who got shot. Is, 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 that, is, that, is that simple idea just because if someone, quote unquote, perfect that has this or that gets killed, it's so much more tragic. Of course. As opposed to someone who just— Why feel bad for my dad? Yeah. He got what he was getting. Yeah, Media-wise, I, I get that it's just wild to me again that that exists in regards to the law enforcement aspect and that at least from this specific story that they weren't dusting for fingerprints. There's no— it didn't, from what you're telling me, I know nothing about the investigation beyond this, that it didn't seem like a valid attempt. And this happens all the time. I know yeah. this happens all the time, um, which is why I think it's also vital that you're sharing this and bringing it to light. Well, my thing is, which is very frustrating because it does happen a lot, and we see it in other ways. I started really contacting the police for these case files, ironically, the morning that George Floyd was murdered before he was murdered. So we see this a lot in many facets of law enforcement. There is zero accountability for any of it. Within the law enforcement yes. community. So if cops murder people, we know that there's no accountability. But if they don't investigate properly, there is no accountability for that. There is no, oh, you didn't collect evidence that could potentially completely derail an investigation and prevent a conviction from happening. But there's no accountability for you for doing that. There's no checks and balances unless someone like you steps up and does what you're doing. Yeah. Unless the family calls it out or someone else investigates it. And how fucked up is that? And it's not to say that that's always the case. There's nuance in everything. Everything, there's nuance. Sure. Whatever. But... When there should be a standard. I mean, I watch freaking SVU. There's a standard. You tape off a scene. You do this. You do that. That's just the standard. So if those things aren't done, I'm not saying that if there isn't a conviction, the cops are always to blame. Of course. But there's a set of things that you just do that weren't done. And who's responsible for that? Not them. They got away with it. So what's next in this investigation? What is your what is your next step? Oh, Actually, I'm coming for their asses. Who's they? The- All of them. Anyone who prevented this from getting solved at the time, the people who did it, the witnesses, the prosecutor's office, the sheriff's department. Like, I did you a favor by making this public because I'm coming for you and at least now you have a heads up. How are you coming for them? But just by continuing to figure it out? Or I, will, physically- I will find out what happened. I will find out what happened. And how close do you think you are? Closer than ever. Closer than ever? You did mention to me, I'm not sure if you want to speak about it, but you said you feel like you spoke and may speak to the person who killed your father. Am I saying that accurately? If you think he did it. I don't know if he did. You think he did? I don't know. I thought he did. Why do you think he did? I thought he did. Thought. Because that's what was presented to me. And it made sense. I mean, I think anyone with half a brain would look at what I looked at and make the same assumption. What did you look at? Police files, talking with the town, uh, talking with the prosecutor's office, the sheriff's department. It seems like, I mean, yeah, anyone would come to the same conclusion that I am coming to, that this person was there and more than likely pulled the trigger, which is what I said. I never said that he definitively did it. I I said, I, I really think that this person did it. And I think that there was someone else there as well based on sort of the same set of facts. They were close. They knew each other. This person's name was redacted. People were sort of talking about him around the town. I'm sort of just, I'm making assumptions, of course, but they're all educated guesses. They aren't just like out of my ass. Like I'm- You don't have DNA, so at this point you gotta trust- I have to just, you know, look at what is in front of me and try to disprove it. And I, and that is truly- an option, maybe not my goal, but I'm down to disprove my own theory because that gets me closer to figuring out what happened. Mm-hmm. What What is the noise around town? You, you said you speak, you have spoke to people within the community, correct? Or is that not true? Yeah, yeah, I've talked to some people. So is there any whispering of people either not directly correlated, but in the ballpark of either knowing your father, knowing people in town? Is there any whispers of the same name going around? Of course. And again, it's going back to the root of, well, where did that come from? If the police are saying these names, then naturally the town will start saying these names. And almost in like, I mean, it's not sort of self-fulfilling prophecy at this point because 
he either did it or he didn't. But it's like when you buy a Honda CRV and then you start seeing Honda CRVs everywhere. If you're going around saying, this guy did it, everything he does now is going to seem sketchy to you. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of like you're shopping for a, a Toyota and I see Toyotas everywhere. Sure. So how much of that is? Right. And so now I'm trying to sift through that of I thought that this person did it. I mean, fully did it. I really thought that. And I I knew that there was an element of, I don't know that definitively, but I'm like, I think it was him. It was, seems like he was there. Everyone thinks he was there. The police think he was there. It would make sense that he was there, whatever. And then I start getting all this info. Well, oh, well, he's really aggressive. Oh, well, he had this charge, which makes it likely that he's capable of murder. And so all of these things start to kind of come forward and you're like, well, this all adds up. So there's a guy in jail right now that you think killed your father. Yeah, I think it's very likely. Um, Again, based on the rumors that sort of go around town, what's in the police files, this person's connection to my dad. It's very likely that he was there. And if there's only two or three people there, there's a 33 to 50% chance it was him. And that's pretty freaking close considering no one could figure this out for 21 years. So now I just have to either prove or disprove, which I'm open to both, that it was or wasn't him. Do you have any help right now or is it just you trying to figure out who killed your dad? I have help in the sense that like, I have friends who are working with me on the podcast side. On the investigative side, it's um, mostly me. I mean, I do like the same people who help me with the podcast sort of indirectly are just around when I get information and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Mm. But um, it is mostly like me making the phone calls, talking to people, trying to, you know, follow leads and get a hold of everyone and keep the ship sailing. Well, let me ask you, because I never spoke to anyone in this situation. Uh, you know, it's been six, 28, it's been 26 years since your father was killed and you don't know who killed your father. What does that mean to you today? How do you feel today about all this? Like today? You know, today, a week before, <laughs> six months, today. Where's today, Madison? How, how are you handling not having a dad, especially now that you're trying to figure out who killed him? Oh, I've redefined daddy issues for sure. <laughs> Can't help myself. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's okay. It's good. Um, I mean, it's such a bummer. I like, I don't know. It's such a lame, like, whatever. But like, it is. It's just such a bummer. I don't have a great relationship with my mom, which is no secret. And, and maybe we wouldn't have a great relationship. Maybe I have a better relationship with my dad now that he's dead than I would have if he was alive. I don't know. He's not here. But I'd rather, I like knowing that my mom and I don't get along. You than like wondering, that. well, she's dead. What would our relationship be like? Got it. You know what I mean? I get it. So it's such a it's just a bummer that like I don't get to know. I don't I don't know. I I just wish that like I had a dad. I don't know. It's so it's so stupid, but like I my parents weren't together. They weren't going to be together. So like I don't think that I would even know what like a household looks like that was super like put together. Is it the what ifs that's killing you? Yeah, it's like I don't know. I just think of like the support that I could have had. I mean, I've always been a big, like, ambitious weirdo. And, like, what if my dad was like, oh, you really like this? Why don't we go try doing this? Where would I be? I don't know. You could say that for anything. But, like, I think that there's definitely this level of, like, parental support and love that I've missed out on yeah. that, like, I see my friends have and, you know, it's the holidays, like, going home for the holidays or whatever. It's, like, you you always will wonder, and it's weird. And I, I don't think that that necessarily makes me sad because I don't have a great relationship with my mom anyways. But knowing who my dad was now, like, learning about him through investigating and talking to his friends – talking to my family, I'm like, damn, what a sick dude. Like, I would have loved, like, as an adult to, like, kick it with my dad. And so I also think, like, women are really close with their dads and men are close with their moms. And so, like, I definitely, like, my mom and I fight like we're sisters. And so I definitely feel like, oh, I would have, like, maybe been a chiller person or I would have had someone to relate to a little bit more. I think my dad and I shared a lot of, like, 
mental illness issues. Like, he was very depressed. I have massive depression. He was super anxious. I struggle with anxiety. I think we would have been able to, like, level with each other a lot more. And I wouldn't... My mom does not understand mental illness at all. Um, She, like... I will text my mom that I'm sad. And she's like, okay. So it's like she just doesn't get it. And so I'm like, oh, what would it be like to have a parent who, like, understands me a little bit more? Yeah, it's tough. You you grew up without a dad and you don't have a relationship with your mother. So you have— Oh, we have a relationship. A good relationship, sorry. Just um, chaotic. Okay, yeah. Well, (laughs) sorry for misspeaking there. That was, you know. (laughs) Oh, Glenda and I talk all the time. Glenda? You don't see too many of those names anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I just wonder, you know, it's interesting because a lot of, you know, a lot of things you just said and a lot of things we just covered specifically moments ago was a lot of how would I be, what would it be, what could I have had? And then you have this opportunity to find answers in investigating your father and all the other questions you answer are all speculative. You couldn't, you're not going to find out. It's all what would my, who would I be with if I had my dad? What would he have been like? What, what, are, what would our relationship be? But now you have this opportunity that you're taking on to try to find an answer relating to your dad. So it feels like this is the opportunity that you have to offer some control of a situation when all the other questions that seem to be existential that are affecting how you feel today, you're never going to get an answer. You're not going to find out. But when it comes to investigating your father, there's a chance there that you might be able to kind of get some sort of answers that may offer some closure. Yeah. Yeah. And when things are in my hands, I always get what I want. Mm. Maybe mommy not to shake your hand when we leave. <laughs> but like, you know what Bada I mean? Bing. Like, I don't always get what I want when it's up to other people. No, I get it. But if I am in control and I like, and I've been like this my whole life, like even with like my career and like goals I have, like if I can make something happen, you better believe it's going to happen. Mm. And people still somehow doubt me. They're crazy. But I've been like this since I was a kid. And people are like, Madison is so weird. She thinks she's going to do this. Yeah. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it even better than you thought I was going to do it. Mm. And, like, this is no different. Because, like you said, this is in my control. I can keep going until I find an answer. So I will. Yeah. Amen. So how do people find... Uh Plug your podcast, because for anyone that's listening to this story, there's obviously a lot more information that I'm sure you've dived into. They're like, I never want to hear this girl ever again. Hell no, no. <laughs> now, I'm, now that I talked to you, because I specifically did not go deeper into your podcast because I wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth, <laughs> not calling you a horse. And I think I don't, now- I like, wanted to make a horse sound. I can't. I'm yeah, and I'm glad you didn't. Um, but- <laughs> That would have ruined that would have ruined the episode. But uh, glad we're over an hour in. But no, for for if, if for people that are listening right now that want to tap into more of your investigations and what you found, and you know more into your story than what we just dove into an hour, because there's a lot more information that I'm curious about. Tell people about your podcast and where they can find you. Yeah, so my podcast is called Ice Cold Case. <laughs> oh, and drop the mic whenever you want. If there's anything that we didn't cover that you feel like you want to get off your chest to clarify and or say, just this is your opportunity. My podcast is called Ice Cold Case. It's just Ice Cold Case on Instagram. And I think there's a TikTok, but I think there's like nothing on there. I think there's Ice Cold Case Pod on Twitter. Not really sure. But I'm Madison1D underscore McGee with an H on everything. And this is all allegedly. Everything you just said, I'm like, does she even have a podcast? Because she doesn't even know if the TikTok exists. Just you know if this exists. <laughs> it does exist, right? The TikTok? Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think there's a video on there. Okay, we'll take one. Perfect. Um, I'm going to put all the links, as usual, in the description for you to listen to her podcast and, and check more of her I just want to make sure everyone knows that everything I said, from top to bottom, about my mother being a bitch to anyone involved in anything related to my dad, all allegedly, speculative, not 100% sure, can't say for certain, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Dead Talks. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Dead Talks. Please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. That'll give you updates as to when we post a new video, more episodes, and more content in general. We are streaming on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and all that. And also find us on Instagram at Dead Talks Podcast or www.deadtalks.net. Thank you so much.